pinned to the skyline by a forest of oil derricks, Oklahoma's distant horizons. Each derrick representing a well drilled deep into the earth, seeking that black gold, the elusive petroleum. 340 oil fields in Oklahoma, each field a source of wealth such as Midas dreamed not of. Petroleum, the magic source of power, without which our modern civilization must fail. The source of light, of heat, of boundless energy. When Charles Gould, the founder of the Oklahoma Geological Survey and the OU School of Geosciences, penned his poem, he saw Oklahoma's destiny, a future we had only begun to dream of. He knew that between the black gold and red dirt was evidence of eons waiting to be uncovered, waiting to be understood, waiting to turn this land into a force that would someday power the world. Welcome to a century of unlimited energy. This is my alma mater, this is my love. I'm not sure why you love your undergraduate degree more than you do your graduates and doctorate degrees, but this is clearly what I consider to be home. I'm a Sooner and uh, I love this university. So coming back on campus is enthusiastic and exciting and you know, whether it be watching the football team or, or participating in college of engineering or petroleum engineering kind of activities, it's a special feeling. When you walk on this campus, you feel it. It's a, it's a great place to work. You know, I've been fortunate to work for Curtis Muburn for uh, over 35 years now. He offered me an opportunity in 1983 when there weren't many out there. When he started the company in 1965, he wanted to build a successful, respected oil and gas company. And even today, we want to be uh, the best in the areas we operate. When you look at the leaders in the oil and gas industry, uh, you will find a large percentage that have the OU uh, branding you know, associated with their name. When you look at all the fronts from research to grooming and preparing the individual to get into the industry for success, uh, I would rank OU right up there with any university. I'm glad I graduated a long time ago because these kids are off the charts smart. University of Oklahoma is really well positioned to be a leader in unconventional space. Using this combination of technologies, hydraulic fracturing, horizontal drilling, seismic imaging, nanotechnology, all of these things kind of come together here and we know the science, we practice it. If you go downstairs, you'll see some of the best labs in the world. We can break rocks, we can create the environment of the subsurface with pressure. We can basically recreate what Mother Earth has 10,000 feet below, and we can try it in the lab. Look around you. We're in the center of this. If you want to come to the University of Oklahoma to study completions, and you want to see what completion is like, we can get in a car and be there in 30 minutes. Few schools have the access to the kind of industry development that we have just around us. When I attended OU in 1979, anybody that was interested in the oil and gas business was getting a job and had multiple job offers. The, the industry was in the middle of a tremendous upcycle. It was truly booming. And then in about 1982, uh, the oil business started a down cycle. I'll never forget, I walked into my first class my senior year at OU studying petroleum engineering. The professor recommended that I consider changing my major. That's how difficult things were at the time. The big news of the 80s, the very early 80s, natural gas sold for $10 or more than $10 per million BTUs and it dropped down to the $1 or $2. When your product doesn't sell for very much, 
Nobody's interested in making capital investments. Demand for engineers, they diminished. Hiring plummeted from several thousand a year entering the industry to well under a thousand. We've had two booms and two busts since then. It became an oil boom the next time. The last was partly price-driven, but also very much technologically driven. When you start drilling and completing wells horizontally, you don't need as many wells as you did when I first came here, and they were all vertical. In 2003, I was the chairman of the supply committee for the National Petroleum Council. In that report, we said that the U.S. oil and gas business was done. We don't know where we're going to find fossil fuels anymore. We don't know if we can make any additional recoveries. Uh, we need to go external to the country and bring in other sources like LNG. I believe that so much that I changed my career. I went to the Middle East to develop one of those LNG projects so that we could keep the lights on here. The challenge became, what do we do when our kids are not getting employed? That's their primary purpose for getting this degree. Everything is dynamic. If you are aesthetic, you are gone. The faculty and the researchers have to get involved in that change. And I think we have learned at Mewburn Oil Company, being a smaller company, that actually that, that risk, that volatility, that uncertainty can be our friend. In many instances, that uncertainty, that volatility creates opportunity. Most of the oil and gas production was from conventional reservoirs, which means they have, they have high porosity, high permeability. Now, by contrast with that, the shale, if we were to make a section of that, a very thin section, and examine it uh, either under the projector or the microscope, we would find that the holes, the pores were so small that the fluid couldn't go through it. That's right, and for that reason, we call this kind of a rock impermeable. And then all of a sudden, People in the industry found out that the shells, which were considered a nuisance a few years back, could be a source of additional gas and hydrocarbon production. Source rock is usually flat like a pancake, right? So we drill vertical holes. So it's very difficult, right, to, to access a lot of the rock. Well, then came horizontal drilling. So now we're able to drill, turn the drill bit, run parallel in the source rock, then couple that with the previous technology of hydraulic fracturing. Now we can bring abundance of oil and gas in this impermeable rock to the well bore. This is what we call the shale revolution. So when we think about this technology innovation that's taken place over this hundred years, it's always fascinating to me to see where that creativity comes from. And that creativity has not necessarily come from the majors. It was the independence in the oil and gas business here in North America that experimented. They tried. They tried the impossible. And they overcame. And they figured out things that we didn't think were possible. Those independents are our alumni. The work going on in our department in the area of shale gas is recognized throughout the world. The cutting edge research is going on over here. If you come from a culture, from a value system, where getting down simply means you get to get up, and once you get up, you take things to the next level, then you can make a huge difference. You take these kinds of people and put them in difficult situations, they find creative solutions. The state of Oklahoma breeds tough, very resilient, very capable people. As long as there have been people in Oklahoma, there have been stories about oil. It seeped from the ground, into homes, up through cattle fields, a mysterious and messy nuisance. With a state abundant in natural resources, you would think that a school of petroleum engineering at the University of Oklahoma was nothing short of inevitable. But the story of this program is an unlikely one. In the year 1919, the largest war the world had ever known was marching to its bloody conclusion. The Spanish influenza pandemic had barely released its grip on the globe. Neither tragedy left OU unscathed. The 1919 Sooner Yearbook holds evidence of the scars left on the university. 
the first 73 pages of the 1919 yearbook memorialize students, faculty, and staff who died or served in World War I and who died from the Spanish flu. That was the year Leon Everett English walked across the stage to receive his degree in engineering geology. It would be years before the term petroleum engineer existed. The program's founding faculty, H.C. George and Fred W. Paget, were risk takers, developing a degree that had not been tested in industry. Leaning on knowledge and instinct fueled by grit, they took the risk. It's a time when at least in the United States, the whole world just changes. The First World War was one of the most shaping events to our country. Lots of young men went away. Not all of them came back. Before World War I, there were maybe five or six giant oil fields in Oklahoma. We're in the throes of discovering really huge reservoirs. And most of those were discovered between the wars. The whole thing has changed. hundred years ago, you won't recognize an uh, oil field. We were only drilling hundred years ago a vertical well. You didn't go uh, more than maybe a few hundred feet. If you don't have the oil, you walk someplace else. We didn't have seismic understanding. That was a, you know, a 1920s kind of a phenomenon. We were trying to understand how to read what's under the ground and get imaging. The other great societal shock was the oncoming depression. And for us in Oklahoma, we also had the Dust Bowl. My mother tells me that you would dust the house in the morning. If you didn't dust it at noon, it was still dirty at night. Baked out, blown out, and broke. We survived that because there's a lot going on in the oil industry. This decade boomed with discovery and invention. New oil fields were frequently discovered. The invention of the catalytic cracker in 1937 brought new advances in refining. Now higher quality fuels could meet the specific requirements of new automotive engines. Soon after, however, the U.S. declared war on Japan and entered World War II. With the war came a renewed demand for petroleum. The impact of the oil industry on an Allied victory was profound. From fuel to synthetic rubber, the oilmen of Oklahoma supplied the front lines with the energy needed for victory. It was during this time that students left universities in droves to join the fight. Many of the nation's petroleum engineering programs closed their doors. But at the University of Oklahoma, the petroleum program grew substantially. One of the great things that came out of World War II, socially, was the uh, GI Bill plan. The GI Bill of Rights is not a reward, or a handout, or a gravy train, but rather an American way to make it easier for each man to take his place once again in the community and get some of those things for which he went to war. A job, a business, an education, a home. War generally makes opportunity. So you have an opportunity to expand manufacturing. You have a need for the things to keep that economic and industrial expansion. That generation did so much for all of us that I think sometimes we, we underestimate 
the benefits, I mean, even the freedoms that we enjoy today came as a result of the sacrifices of that great generation. After the World War II generation and the post, we ended up with an entrepreneurial spirit that I'm not sure we'll ever create again. If you think of it, this has been a birthplace uh, for the oil industry in a number of ways. These pioneers have changed the economy. They have changed everything in the oil industry. Coal and water power are important, but by far the biggest job of providing our energy belongs to petroleum. For the next two decades, the industry was completely revolutionized. With the introduction of hydraulic fracturing and the global spread of Oklahoma's energy prowess, the 60s and 70s saw advancement after advancement, from 3D imaging to fueling the Apollo 11 rocket. Only a few years later, the development of the deep Anadarko Basin triggered oilmen from around the world to rush to Oklahoma to find black gold. Really, our resiliency comes from the down cycles, right? And so, you know, to be able to survive through the down cycles, it's equally important that the school and the college have the staying power in the down cycles. As Oklahomans, being tied to oil and gas and being tied to the weather, we understand ups and downs. And a lot of people say Oklahomans have grit, and we pull ourselves up from our bootstraps. And that's you see that evidence through the university and um, digging deep in the fourth quarter in a game or you know, w really working hard to excel in academics. We have that grit and that resolve to really be excellent in all we do. By 1995, the industry was getting back up on its feet again. 4D seismic imaging emerged. For the first time, petroleum engineers could see fluid movement between wells, a technological advancement that impacted everything from reservoir characterization to the location of bypassed reserves. Then, in 1997, the first application of modern hydraulic fracturing was successful, leading to a boom in North American oil and gas production. So looking back over the last 100 years, I think there are so many aha moments that the one thing you take away is the conventional wisdom of the time, whenever that is, is rarely right. The conventional wisdom is most often wrong. So if you really want to participate in the future, the last thing you want to do is anchor your thinking in the past. What we have today over the last hundred years is we can look back and we can see step changes in technology, step changes in thinking that took us to a place that we never thought possible. I cannot begin to imagine what the next hundred years brings. love music. I played music ever since I was seven years old and I feel like that's one thing that stuck with me all this while. My mom, she was the one who put us in music school and she told us to choose two instruments. I chose the guitar and the keyboard. Me and my brother were really competitive. He chose the drums so he's amazing at it but every time I asked him like can you teach me he's like nope. So then I said okay I'll teach myself <laughs> so I taught myself the drums. Because I have music on the side, it kind of helps me balance uh, my education. When I'm not studying, I'm definitely making music. And when I'm not playing music, I'm, you know, studying. Whenever I'm exposed to new opportunity here at OU, uh, if I think back, about a person that would have 
gave me such good advice on you know whether to do it or not definitely my dad just to see how well he's progressed from where he was in India to where he's now from a village to like a big city he's just a very hard worker and that's someone that I also want to be mentorship plays a very important role in my life here at university our professors have had so much experience within the industry they're so passionate about what they do within the Mewborn program. What inspires me is to find young people who want to learn, and have a, an ambition, have a curiosity. And if they're listening, then they can benefit instantaneously from, from what may have taken years. So the more they uh, understand and become aware of what's already happened, then their minds can be used to accelerate the, the next solution. It is not going to come from the brawn of the past generations. It's gonna come from the innovation and the clever ideas. It's this collaboration that we enjoy with the industry as we produce their future employees, and then yet we also produce the future solutions uh, to the next biggest challenges. Most people underestimate the impact that affordable and abundant energy has on people's development of their economy and of their own personal enjoyment of life. Every country that's gonna enjoy the development that we've enjoyed are gonna confront these, these kinds of issues. We need the economic development. We want the benefit of everybody enjoying the, the, the things that life brings, but we have to do it in an environmentally sustainable way. If you look in those countries, the women are given the task of collecting the biofuel or preparing it for the evening, which means it is taking away from their education. And then there is definitely a more chance of catching disease or involved in an accident. And we've got to change that. We've got to educate people. So as they go through this learning curve from being a, a underdeveloped country to a developed country, uh, we need to share the knowledge. Think about the opportunities that we can bring to these emerging countries simply by sharing the technologies. But let's not share the technologies that are not sustainable. Let's make them sustainable and share those. It's an industry that needs creative people, creative thinking. Definitely men and women together will make it even better. This is a transformational culture. They're here for some broader purpose. They want to be a part of the growth and they see the growing demand of population across the world and the energy requirements are going to be there, but they want to make sure that it's done in the right way. I have every confidence in the world that the next generation of petroleum engineers are going to solve the problems that we currently feel are unsolvable. When I think about the energy industry, not only has it played a key role in advancing technology and making energy affordable, but it's played a key role in bringing cultures together because we've gone and searched for this energy source all over the world. And in doing so, we had to interact with people of different backgrounds and different beliefs. And when we did, we brought globalization right to the forefront. I'm originally from India, but my parents moved to the UAE in the early 90s and I was born and raised in Abu Dhabi, which is the capital. I live in the heart of the city. We live on Eat Street. I've been exposed to so many different kinds of people and backgrounds and I wanted to kind of experience that in another country and see what it's like. My dad did play a bit of a big role in my decision to choose petroleum engineering and he said it's a good field to get into and with that career you could travel the world. There's so little I knew about the industry prior to coming. Once I decided that petroleum engineering was what I wanted to pursue, I just learned so much so fast. And imagine all that you learn, it'll just progress, it'll just like blossom once you graduate and you can apply that to so many different places that you go to. The sun does not set on petroleum engineering graduates at the University of Oklahoma. We have grads all over the globe. We have a great history of hiring OU grads, and OU grads have done really well at Halliburton over the last hundred years. And I think it's based in our values around integrity, honesty, innovation, competition. All those values that are so important to Halliburton are also important at OU. And I think that comes through 
when they join our company and become leaders. The alumni of the Mewburn School of Petroleum and Geological Engineering end up in a variety of different places. Some choose academic pursuits, and in so doing, will go on to graduate school and ultimately become faculty and become the future teachers. Some decide to be hardcore researchers. They have a research question or a burning question that needs to be resolved. And then there are some that are gonna go and do industry-related support, and they'll go become entrepreneurs because of the success they experienced within the oil and gas business. So when I think about what our graduates bring, they bring that resilience, that persistence, that the Midwestern values that you only get here in the state of Oklahoma, you get that underlying commitment to excellence. And it's everything we do. There's nothing here at the University of Oklahoma that we accept anything less but than the best. And so I believe our graduates, as a result, go out there and prove that every day. They understand the legacy of the program. They understand that what they are doing matters. The things that you learn today, technology-wise, are going to change. At the University of Oklahoma, you learn how to be a problem solver. And don't be afraid to tackle the problems that come along, because they're important. And so jump into that situation. Go solve that problem. Use your techniques and understanding as an engineer to go and change the world. This is an incredible place, constantly doing the impossible. And the state of Oklahoma has that kind of DNA. This state pulls together when it needs to. This university does too. If you come on this place and can't feel the enthusiasm, the excellence, the commitment of virtually everybody around here, then you're just missing something. To be a Sooner will tell you everything you need to know to be successful. The legacy of Leon Everett English and his fellow pioneering students and faculty echo through the hallways of Sarkey's Energy Center. Their voices call to students, reminding them that good and lasting things can start from the most trying of times, urging them to take a risk, ride the booms, weather the busts, and improve the lives of people everywhere. Far behind us are the days when petroleum engineer didn't exist in our vocabulary. Out of curiosity came discovery, tenacity came victory, and the red dirt state flooded with black gold. There's still more to uncover, invent, and accomplish, communities to serve and expectations to exceed. A shift is coming. Our philosophy is evolving to emphasize environmental stewardship. Our technology is outmatched only by our curiosity. We are educating students to thoughtfully produce resources to power the world. Welcome to the next century of unlimited energy.